Most movies make it clear about the purpose of the film and a clear direction to where the protagonist is going. They plainly make it clear that the narrator can be trusted. If the protagonist wants to play basketball for her ex's heart, or if a character has no choice but to sink into the floor, what we see as viewers is always straightforward. What we see is what we believe. The only time this format is subverted is when a movie has an unreliable narrator. Some examples of films that use this technique is Gone Girl, Shutter Island, and even Forrest Gump. We start the movie thinking one thing, and then by the end we're unsure of what we've just seen. Even though this movie is rarely brought up or discussed when people talk about the movies that have an unreliable narrator, I think Eve's Bayou is one of the best examples. The titular character Eve is the 10 year old protagonist we follow from the beginning of the film until the very end. Her narration opens the movie with the same message and theme that it closes with. Memory is a selection of images, some elusive, others printed indelibly on the brain. When I first watched the movie, I assumed that Eve was always the closest perspective to the truth. But after watching it a dozen times, I realized that her perspective is just as faulty as the other characters. During the opening scene where Eve's family is throwing a party, it's clear from Eve's perspective she thinks Poe is her mom's favorite and Cicely is her father's favorite. Even though it seems like this might be the truth because he chose Cicely to dance with him at the party, and because her mom hugged Poe and said, there's my little boy, it was clear that when it comes to their mother Roz, she loved all her kids equally. Throughout the film, Roz showed how much she cared for her kids in equal ways. From giving Poe hugs and kisses at the party, instantly knowing something is wrong with Eve, using her motherly instinct and knowledge of her own daughter, and noticing that Cicely was extremely depressed and trying her best to get her the help that she needs. When Moselle has a vision that a tragedy would occur, she equally tried to protect them by quarantining them in the house. When it comes to their father Louis, throughout the movie it was unclear who his favorite was. Even though he danced with Cicely at the party, from Eve, a child's perspective, she might feel like he dances with her sister more even though that isn't the truth. It's all about perspective. Even though this is something small, I also find the way that Roz was presented when she went outside to check on Eve, she seemed very intense. In some of those moments, Roz's demeanor was becoming borderline creepy. Her intense stares had a somewhat dark feel to it. I can't say that after this scene, she was never shown with such intensity again. I think that the intensity that was coming from Roz was how Eve perceived her mom to be. This sort of woman who can plaster on a smile even when she's somewhat checked out. Maybe I could be reaching with that scene, but with this film, I felt like everything was done intentionally, so that's why this moment stood out to me. Throughout the whole movie, it was clear that Lewis was a more passive parent. He would show up when there was an issue and lightly chime in. Even when Roz asked him for assistance with the kids, he dismissed her feelings and carried on about his day. That's why throughout this film, it was hard to gauge if Cicely was actually his favorite. What made this plotline even more blurry was when he spent quality time with Eve. When she went along with him to do his check-ins with his patients, he seemed to prefer to go alone so he could hoe around, but since Eve wanted to go so bad, he made an exception. It was never shown or discussed that he had let Cicely tag along before, so maybe Eve was the exception. The only thing that confirmed that Cicely was in fact Lewis's favorite was the letter. He admitted that she was his favorite and that he adored her. If Eve is telling the story decades after it happened, then knowing what was in the letter now would only help mold her childhood memories with the confirmation that Cicely was clearly always Lewis's favorite child. This could easily blur Eve's actual and accurate memories with the now known notion that Cicely was her father's favorite. Also, I think the screenwriter and director Casey made Eve the middle child because there is this belief that the middle child usually feels excluded and ignored. Eve falls into the category of having middle child syndrome. Studies have shown that it's very unclear if the middle child develops this themselves or if family dynamics impose this attitude. This along with Eve telling a story about her childhood memories blurs the lines on what if she felt at the time and the pieces that she remembers now is 100% accurate. The only time I felt that the truth was completely clear happened when any vision was shown. From the very beginning when Eve explains her family's history and their land is shown in black and white, at first I thought this was an aesthetic choice but after the movie progressed, I started to think it was something deeper. 
Every time we saw a vision, it was shown in black and white. Every vision seemed to be the only thing that showed the truth. One example includes when Moselle and Roz are leaving the market after receiving their reading. When the bus approaches them, Moselle gets a vision and it's the events that take place moments before her brother's death. Even though we as repeated viewers know exactly what those pieces of the vision are, to Moselle it looks like a child falling to the ground as the train approaches. She interprets these flashes of images as a child being in danger, but it was actually Lewis who needed to be warned. Those black and white moments happen with every vision and also the retelling of their family's history. I bring all this up to segue into the main source within the film that truly highlighted the uncertainty of memory. It was clear to see from the very beginning of the film that Cicely had strong affections for her dad, Louis. At first, it was shown in subtle ways, like Cicely refusing to go inside the house without her dad, or waiting up for him until he came home. She would take up for him at every moment and did things like bringing him his daily paper and doing other small things she'd think a wife should do. For the first half of the film, you just assume that she's just extremely fond of her dad, but once she sneaks out and cuts her hair like her mom, that's when it becomes clear that a line is being blurred and crossed. What happened on the night of the storm will always be the biggest mystery to me. When Cicely tells the story to Eve, she explains that when she went downstairs to comfort her dad, he took things too far and started kissing her. He started to become aggressive to the point where she had to fight him off. Because she repelled him, he slapped her and knocked her on the floor. As a viewer, I don't fully believe this story and here's why. In an earlier scene where Eve caught Maddie and Louis having adult time, once she explained to her sister about what she saw, Cicely quickly created the story to explain their father's actions away. Eve, of course, didn't believe this, but I find it interesting that Cicely can create a story like this at the drop of a hat. If she could initially do this to protect her father's infidelity, who's to say that she can't make up stories after she felt like her father broke her heart? Another thing I feel discredits Cicely's story is that it's clear she's struggling to adapt into being a young woman. Cicely always tried to act like the other adults, telling grown people to stop it while they're fighting. Stop it! It's late! You want to raise the dead? And telling her younger siblings to stop listening to adult conversations, just to turn around and listen to them herself. I'm not an older sibling, so maybe that's just how they are, but even her trying to have the authority over other adults feels like she's trying her hardest to emulate being one. Where Cicely takes this even deeper is how she emulates what she thinks a woman is or how a woman should be. I think a small part of this has to do with her going through the hormonal changes of becoming a teenager, but most of this confusion comes from the fear of Lewis leaving the family. I think one of the most telling signs of this occurred when Cicely was telling her side of the story. She said that she came downstairs because she was afraid that dad was going to divorce us. Not divorcing our mom or their parents getting a divorce, but she said divorce us. I was afraid you would divorce us. Maybe I'm reaching, but I think the word choice was interesting enough to note. She thought by not only emulating her mom, but also imitating what she thinks a woman is or should be, created confusion on the boundaries a parent and a child are supposed to have. And another example of her going through emotional turmoil is shown perfectly when she starts her cycle. Her isolating herself and then lashing out at Eve shows that she's struggling with every bit of emotion when it comes to growing up. Cicely always thought that if she waited up for her dad, constantly had his back in every situation, and filled in whatever cracks she felt like her mom was lacking, then Lewis would never leave her and the family. Her believing that if she leaned into the mother and wife role, Lewis would want to stay. It's very clear that Lewis had no plans in leaving, but I can't understand from a child's perspective why she would feel this way. This makes me believe that she did in fact initiate and participate in kissing her father. She thought she could fill in those cracks that she felt her mom wasn't fulfilling. Now that I've dissected her perspective on the story, let's get into Lewis's because I don't think he's at all innocent in this situation either. Lewis's perspective of the night of the storm is way harder to confirm the truth because he's dead. Getting his side of the story through a letter he wrote to Moselle was the only way to see how his and Cicely's stories intertwined. Both of their memories included the slap, but their reactions to the kiss is where their story differs. Lewis explained that as soon as he felt like Cicely was kissing him like a woman, he immediately slapped her. He did admit that his response was somewhat delayed because he was drunk, but for some reason, I don't fully trust this retelling. 
When Eve confronts Cicely about the letter, Cicely immediately defends herself and says she's not lying. When asked about what happened that night, Cicely honestly admits that she doesn't know. Most people know that if a traumatic experience occurs, it's common for people to block it out to the point where it's almost impossible to remember. Even after that night, she stopped speaking for weeks and barely ate. This part could be telling that their kiss wasn't one-sided. Now, don't get me wrong, both of their perspectives and stories sound traumatizing regardless, but it's just something to note. Even in the same scene, Cicely said, He hurt me, Eve. He hurt me. Now, Cicely could be talking about what we saw from her perspective, or it could even be a situation that is much darker than what was shown. I can't say what I'm implying on here, but you get my drift. When Eve asked to see what happened that night, I noticed something very interesting. When they use their spiritual gifts, it's always shown in order, so I'm just going to assume that this vision is no different. The first image is of the kiss, which I feel looks very different from both of their retellings. Lewis's eyes are wide open and he looks more alert and awake, and the kiss is more reciprocated. He even leans in and meets her halfway. Then in the next scene, both Cicely and Lewis are staring at each other for a moment, which did not happen in either of their retellings. Originally, they went from kissing and then immediately to the slap. After they look at each other for a moment, he slaps her and that's it. Because throughout the movie, the visions have been accurate and shown in black and white, I think this version is the closest retelling to the truth. What makes this ending even more compelling was that there was originally a somewhat different version. In the director's cut that was released in 2016, a missing part of the film would have clarified a tiny bit more on what happened that night. Now, I tried to get my hands on this copy, but I honestly couldn't find it. A character named Uncle Tume was part of the original cut. He was supposed to be the mute and deaf brother who saw everything that happened that night. Even though the only person who witnessed what happened couldn't verbally tell anyone, I think his actions told a lot. Like I said before, I don't have the director's cut, but for anyone who does, let me know if I get any details wrong. While seeing what happened that night, Uncle Tume dropped the glass to not only disrupt them, but to also make sure they're aware he was there. If something goes on long enough that you have to make them aware that you're seeing what's happening, it probably went on way too long. If it was innocent, then Tome would have never had to drop a glass to interrupt it. Also, if both Cicely and Louis quickly realized what was going on, the slap would have happened so quickly that Uncle Tume wouldn't even have had the chance to announce his presence. With knowing this information and seeing what really happened in the last vision, it became clear to me that the truth lies somewhere in the middle. I think that they both mutually started kissing, Uncle Tume dropped the glass, and this is when they paused and looked at each other. To save face, Louis slapped her and then Cicely ran off. I do want to say that I only fought Lewis in this situation. He is the adult and he clearly knew he was blurring the boundary line between him and Cicely. Even though the director Casey admitted that Uncle Tume was cut out for different reasons. Uh, it's, it's, it's not necessarily something I'm supposed to talk about. <laughs> you know, it's in the contracts and, um, but it, you know, he just didn't like it. The movie was financed by one person. And I think that, um, he liked, I think that there was, to me it was important that there were very beautiful people and that there was something also that, that countered that. You know what I mean? That felt real to me. Um, he, I think he liked, the, the, the beautiful people were important. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna present this strange, kinky little dream of yours, Casey, you know, like, let's, um, let's keep it pretty is, is um, that's not him talking though. That's that's me kind of um, extrapolating, but I think that you know they, it, they were they were also beautiful, you know. And then there was Uncle Tommy, but but to me that was that was kind of like what I was trying to say. I think cutting him out works best with the theme of the film, the uncertainty of memory. I feel like there are so many more examples of uncertainty in this film, but I just wanted to highlight the ones I feel like reside in the more gray areas. I think Eve's Bayou is one of the best black films of all time and it's a clear love letter to gothic films and novels. 
using Tennessee Williams techniques for flashbacks, and even naming one child after one of the more famous gothic horror literary writers, Eve's Bayou will always be remembered for its beautiful storytelling, moving performances, and captivating cinematography. So while I was editing, I took out the part focused on Moselle, and I took it out the original video because I feel like it didn't fit the theme of what I'm talking about when it comes to the uncertainty of memory, but also I edited a section of it already, and I might as well include it in my video so I will put it in the credits so that's what you'll see but I just realized it really just didn't match the theme even though I like what I was saying in that part so I'm just going to include it in the credits. The character that created the most uncertainty throughout the film was Eve's aunt Moselle. From her spiritual gifts to her intentions I was always unsure about her. When it came to Moselle and Roz's relationship it was kind of hard to decide if she had best intentions for Roz's situation. From the moment we saw Lewis in the shed with Maddie, he was shown throughout the rest of the film to be a womanizer and a perpetual cheater. Using his status and respect from the town only made Roz's position more difficult and Moselle knew this. When Roz and Moselle are going for a walk, they start discussing Lewis's cheating and I feel like Moselle was very dismissive of the situation. She goes on to say that Roz needs to give him time and he'll stop cheating and um like, what? For one, if Moselle really wanted to help her, she could have just looked into the future to see if Lewis would actually change. Not only would Roz get to hear the truth, good or bad, but it'll show that Moselle really did have the best intentions for Roz. I do want to include that I'm not 100% sure how her spiritual gifts work, but I'm assuming she can not only see current situations, but the future as well. When Eve admitted what she saw in the shed that night, Moselle told her not to tell anyone, especially her mother. This was very telling because I do feel like she was trying to protect Roz's feelings, but I don't think she had the best intentions for her. Being real with Roz and telling her that Lewis is never going to change would have been what a true friend would admit. Giving her hope about their marriage is only setting her up for more and more pain because she will constantly be hoping that his last time cheating would really be his last time. To me, Roz seemed emotionally checked out and more of a shell of her previous self. She seemed like she was on autopilot just going through the motions, which isn't the healthy or the best thing for anyone. When Roz discussed how she moved down to Louisiana for him, it was highlighted how much she depended on his family for comfort because she was so far from her own. Every time Moselle tries to protect Roz's feelings, she was actually not helping the situation whatsoever and I sort of think that's always been her intention. In two separate scenes, Moselle admitted that her and her brother Lewis are alike, and I agree. We're two of a kind, my brother and I. We are a lot the same, your father and I. I think this fact, along with that being her brother, will always blur the line on Moselle's role as her confidant and quote-unquote friend. Moselle seems to only care to smooth over this situation every time a cheating allegation arises, opposed to just telling Roz the truth. Her intention never felt clear, but hey, that is the point after all. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I would love to know who you think is telling the truth and what do you think about this character, Uncle Tume. So just let me know what you think in the comments. Bye!